in my day job, I do run into a lot of advisors and, and clients who really, really want to subordinate investment policy to tax minimization. It seems to be more important to them than the the investment policy. And I make a simple statement, that's a choice, not a necessity. Academic finance is really, really strong on tax minimization. There's nothing wrong with that. But I take a stand as a business owner that uh, investment policy should not be subordinated to tax minimization policy. And while right. the tax code is often adverse, you know, it's a sign of uh, success or victory if you find yourself having to uh, to, to to pay a bit. So uh, right. it, it's a, right. one of the biggest issues I run into on a daily basis. Page 53, <laughs> Philip Fisher, there was the Old Testament, yep. the New Testament, and then there was common stocks and uncommon profits a million, uh, like a generation ago. Daniel Paris, should Apple raise their dividend? <laughs> Yeah, the the uh, biggest pushback I get from this book, and, and Apple's a perfect example of that, is listen, buybacks are fine, and uh, I I don't dispute the utility of buybacks in certain circumstances, not how they're they're widely used, but I'm I'm challenged and said, well, you know, where would these dividends come from? We don't want to starve companies of growth opportunities. And of course we don't. Uh, companies should invest in, in uh, positive MPV projects. But when there's close to a trillion dollars spent uh, from the S&P 500 companies, notably uh, concentrated in a handful of very, very large tech companies, on buybacks, uh, shifting some of that over time, which I believe will happen as interest rates have stopped falling, uh, is not going to uh, come at the expense of, of investment and growth. It's going to come out of out of the buybacks. And, and uh, Apple and many of the other companies that uh, say they can't afford to, uh, to pay a dividend because they've got so many good growth projects are also buying their shares back hand over fist looks good in a rising market. Uh, they need to do so when they're issuing shares out the back door to employees. Uh, but uh, yeah, the payout ratio for the large tech companies, which is currently pretty low, uh, and for, well, it's called the NASDAQ 100, uh, whether they're in the NASDAQ 100 or not, but I'm just talking about the large mature tech companies. I believe over the next couple years, over the next five to 10 years, you're gonna see many of them follow in the mm -hmm. footsteps of, of uh, Meta and there others go, and, yep. and there get on that path. Yep. There we go. So Daniel, <clears throat> is there an ideal payout ratio? What does the academic research say? Uh, you, you just stepped on an academic landmine. <laughs> I, I don't know if we want to go there. Uh, the, in 1961, the issue of whether there's an ideal payout ratio was uh, uh, raised and uh, answered definitively. So we'll, the answer is no. Uh, and I don't uh, dispute th that finding from 1961, though much of my work is, is uh, historically critical of academic finance, of modern academic finance. Uh, some would say very critical. But uh, I, in the book, I do argue that, listen, I don't know what the payout ratio is going to be and the yield of the S&P 500 is going to be. I just know it's going to be higher than it is now. We've had a 30-year anomaly of declining yields, declining payout ratios, uh, rising uh, buybacks and other phenomena, which I think as the book articulates, kind of came to an end starting in 2020. And is the yield of the S&P 500 ready? Is everyone sitting down? You know, is it going to be 3%, 4%, 4.5%? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. But, Paul, I'm going to pay I think it's going to normalize in that, that direction. If, Tim, if, if Lucas was here from Apple, he'd say all of our research is shareholders don't want to pay tax on that 4% SPX dividend. So what do you say to that, Daniel, about the, the tax implications here? What's the counter argument, I yep. guess, if there is one? Yeah, the... the the only the only difference right now, remember, long term capital gains and uh, qualified dividends are taxed at the same rate. Okay. So from a uh, purely investment perspective or uh, it, it, there, there's no penalty when modern academic finance and when that Apple executive was being trained, uh, tax rates were uh, were higher on dividends than they were on capital gains. That's no longer the case and hasn't been since 2003. The only difference is timing. So that a uh, investor can time a capital gain or a capital loss. Again, investors yeah. can harvest capital losses as easily as they can harvest capital gains. But an investor can time that, whereas a dividend occurs more regularly. My answer, and it's really the theme of the book, and it's in the title, and you, you, you caught it, Tom, is a harvested capital gain is a market outcome for which many, many people, when the market moves up and to the right, are very happy with. A dividend payment is a business outcome. Uh, you can choose to play the market or you can choose to be a business owner. Now, there are a lot of young people in particular who 
don't care about being a business owner. They just think of stocks, buy low, sell high, repeat frequently, it goes up to the right. <laughs> and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with them. that kind of a clientele effect. There are a lot of people who are very satisfied with that. I'm just pointing that if you bring a business owner sensibility to stocks, the same way you might to right. real estate or a private enterprise, you view a harvested right. capital gain as something dramatically different from a dividend pay. I got one minute left, Daniel Paris. Is Zuckerberg the executive of the year because he turned <laughs> gear here so <laughs> and just simply said, no, we're going to change this. We're going to do this like a conservative measured company. I just think he's a quick reader. So the book came out one day and the very next day uh, 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 Meta made its decision. So I, I applaud him for, for reading, getting a copy and reading it quickly.